High School in Fort Thomas. I remember when I was younger, I was sitting in the pews watching the senior give the sermon. I had always looked up to them, and it made me wonder who I would be when I was as old as they were, which felt like forever then, but now it only feels like a couple years ago. When Shannon asked me to give the sermon, I thought to myself, now I'm going to be that old senior up there. I was excited and happy to do it, but was very nervous. I had been a part of Trinity since before I could remember, so I wanted this to be absolutely perfect for all the people who had given me such an amazing community to grow up in. But of course, that's not the way anything in life goes. The point being, I'm still unsure of where I'm going to college. The past few months, my Google search has been filled with where should I go to college and how to choose between two colleges. I spent the last months of my senior year worrying about what my future is going to look like, which again, is never what you think it is going to look like. I do know that I went to double major nursing in Spanish so I can travel around the world and deliver health services to those in need. I know this sounds unproblematic. I know what I want to do. All I have to do is pick a place. That's the easy part many people say. But being raised in such a wonderful church as this one, my standards are unreasonably high. I'm grateful for the community here. I've learned so much and have grown tremendously. Throughout this whole decision process, I've tried to remain grateful. It seems like a simple thing, although it can be proved to be incredibly difficult at times. There's always something to be grateful for, even when times are hard. It is like a flower growing in a cracked sidewalk. We always have God's unconditional love, no matter what. But this past week, I have felt guilty because I have been worrying and not trusting in God. When I was thinking about what I was going to talk about today, I thought about how much God loves us and supports us. Then, when I reflected on what I had written, I wondered, how could I write about his love and support and myself not completely trust and have faith in it? But then I talked with my friend, who said there is a reason why I haven't made a decision yet and that Jesus is looking out for me and will help me. I realized that it's okay for our trust to waver and that it can't always be 24-7. That is what makes faith, faith. The Gospel this morning talks about how Jesus is like a shepherd to us and how he looks after us and takes care of those who believe in him. He guides them. The shepherd represents faithfulness, compassion, guidance, and protection. This week, I had been so wrapped up in my worries that I completely missed the irony of the situation. Jesus is looking out for me and all of you. We don't need to worry. Knowing that someone is looking out for you and praying for you is enough to relax and ease your racing mind. I'll find out where I'm going to college. However, the national decision deadline is tomorrow. <laughs> For others, he will guide us through difficult parts in our life, but we like to have him close for the good times too. I saw this post on Instagram that said, may I never forget on my best day that I still need God as desperately as I did on my worst. I just finished my AP research project in school regarding exercise and concentration, requiring a 20 minute presentation and a 5,000 word paper. This was a year-long endeavor, and it definitely pushed me to my limits, and sometimes made me question why I had taken the class. My teacher shepherded me through these doubtful times. Before my presentation this week, I was very nervous. When I told my teacher this, she asked me if there's anything she could do to help. She also gave me words of encouragement, making me feel like I could do it. As part of the research process, I had asked some of my other teachers to help me with different aspects of it. I then invited them to serve on my panel. Seeing my teachers at my presentation made me so grateful and excited that we had finally gotten to this point. Afterwards, they told me they were proud of me and that I had done an amazing job. I felt like I had just run a personal best. I felt so accomplished and exceeded my expectations. My teachers are some of the, some of the shepherds in my life. Even though I will be leaving them this summer, I will hold on to all the wonderful things they have taught me. The teachers in our lives are always looking out for us and guiding us to be the best person we can be. They support us and are there for us during our best and our worst days. They are like the shepherd tending to their sheep. 
we should all be grateful that Jesus is our shepherd. Sometimes it is hard to see where Jesus is leading us, and sometimes sheep stray, but ultimately we come back to him. Jesus has shepherded me in many ways, one being serving others. I have been an acolyte since fifth grade and was one of several who started streaming the services when COVID stopped us from coming to church. I was grateful for the ministry we started and that I was able to help people stay connected. Jesus acted through the people of Trinity to shepherd me. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 27, says God gives strength to the weary and power to the weak. God has granted me and everyone here the ability, ability to help the weary and the weak. Wherever I end up, I will be inspired by the love and charity Trinity has given to others and will try to do the same. Some other ways Jesus has shepherded me grow and lead me is being a friendly face. I was a very shy child and I'm still quiet, but I've grown and learned to be welcoming and talk to those who may not have someone to talk to. At Cathedral Domain, my friend and I were asked by our counselor to counsel a camp later that summer. I had never counseled a camp before, but I was excited. To say I learned a lot is an understatement. Learning to take care of that many campers and make sure they stay safe is incredibly hard and my respect for my parents and any profession where you have to look after kids skyrocketed. <laughs> but I also enjoyed the time I got to spend with the campers and making connections with them. Since they were still pretty young, they could walk up to just about anyone and make a friend. It was really fun to watch their carefree spirits connect with one another. With this and service through, service through Trinity's EYC group, of which we are soon to embark on a mission trip to Eastern Kentucky, has shown me the importance of service to others. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse two, it says to not forget to show hospitality to strangers. Trinity, the domain, and the Episcopal Church do an amazing job of including others and in giving back to the community. As I was thinking about where to go to college, I was worried that if I moved away from home and away from Trinity, that I would lose a part of myself. It will be different, but the love will not be lost. A verse that will remind me of this is Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Nothing can separate us from God's love. Sometime this week, find something you are grateful for and tell someone about it. Telling others will encourage them to do the same, and we will all feel closer to God and one another. I know deep down that wherever I go, I'll make the most out of it and live the life God and Jesus have made for me to live. Galatians chapter 6, verse 13, says that we are called to be free and to serve one another in love. God wants us to live a life free from worry. He wants us to take time to be grateful and to fly free. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, there is a time for everything, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance and there is always time to be grateful. Amen.